Welcome back to the OVIS Controlled Vocabulary Series. In this video, we will follow the P01 decision tree for a few example chemical measurements. If you are not familiar with this decision tree, please see the first video in this series. Chemical measurements often include concentrations, sedimentation rates, and so on. So the first example we will look at is the concentration of copper in the dry weight of a sediment sample. So beginning our decision tree, of course, the first question is which identifier are we looking at? We are looking for the measurement type ID. What type of measurement do we have? We have a chemical substance. So as we saw in the biological measurement video, the first action is of course to navigate to CDataNet facet search, which we are already there. The next question is, what is the chemical substance being measured? The chemical substance is copper. The action associated with this is to search for the name of the chemical in the free search box. So we can type in copper here, or we can go ahead and click copper right here since it's already listed in the chemical substance section. So clicking copper will apply the filter and we can move on to the next step. So what is the measurement property and is it a statistically derived parameter? Well, the example is the concentration of copper and dry weight of a sediment sample. So it's not a statistically derived parameter. But of course, if it were, you can always look in the S07 collection to see examples of statistically derived parameters. But note, of course, that going to this collection or any other collections besides the P01 is not necessary or recommended to find your P01 code. The next action is to search or identify the measurement from measurement property. In this case, it's concentration. So we can go ahead and select it here. However, we can see that we have 371 results and clicking concentration, we will still have 371 results. So it may not be necessary, but we're gonna go ahead and click it anyways to make sure our results going forwards will include concentration. The next question is, what is the matrix? Well, in this case, the matrix is the sediment. And although specifically we're looking at the dry weight of the sediment, we'll get to that part later. A related question here is, what is the measurement matrix relationship? For example, of such relationships, you can of course look in the SO2 collection. Now let's move on to our action. So it says, consider the units of your measurements and whether a subgroup was targeted to help you determine the matrix measurement relationship. So our measurement is the concentration of copper per dry weight of the sediment. So our measurement matrix relationship is per dry weight and our matrix is of course the sediment. So going here, we can look under matrices. We don't see it right away here. So we will go ahead and type it into the free search box. Now looking under matrices, we see that there are several options. There's just sediment, and then there's sediment below certain sizes, as well as suspended particulate material. Because our measurement doesn't specify a size, we will simply select sediment. Note that these specific size ranges for sediment represent a subgroup for our sphere being sediment. So in the cases where your measurement takes into account subgroups or even subphases, depending on what your matrix is, it's important to make sure your P01 code includes this information. So returning back to our example, of course, as I said, we do not have information of whether a subgroup is relevant. So we will simply select sediment. Now there are five results. And fortunately for us, the only measurement matrix relationship left is the per unit dry weight of, this suits our example measurement nicely. The next question is, were any methods used to obtain the measurement? In our case, we do not have any information about methods used. So we will look for a generic code here. You can see that the first several examples include the concentration of copper obtained by a variety of methods, for example, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, or compression into pellets and x-ray fluorescence. The last entry here is the concentration of copper per unit dry weight of the sediment. So let's check this concept and obtain the URI for it. We can see the definition is simply the concentration of elemental copper per unit mass of dry sediment. 
which works quite well for our example measurement. So we will copy this URI into the measurement type ID field for all records in the extended measurement or fact table that record the concentration of copper per unit dry weight of sediment. The next example we will look at is the concentration of chlorophyll A in a water sample obtained using an in situ chlorophyll fluorometer. So of course, beginning with our decision tree, we are looking at a chemical substance. We have already navigated to the C data net facet search. So what is the chemical substance being measured? And then search for the name of the chemical substance in the free search box. The first question is, what is the chemical substance being measured? This is of course, chlorophyll A. Moving on to the action, we must search for the name of this chemical in the free search box. So we have searched for chlorophyll A. The next step is what is the measurement property? With the sub question, is it statistically derived parameter? It is not, it's not the mean, max, min, or any other statistically derived parameter. Next, we will search for or identify the measurement from the measurement property box. And indeed, this is concentration. So we will simply click concentration here. And this has narrowed our search results from 212 down to 180. Let's narrow this down further by looking at the next question. What is the matrix? Our measurement comes from a water sample. So that will be the water body. Now, when we look at the matrices here, you can see that there are several subphases also available. So particulate greater than different size range. So there is unknown phase, the GF slash F phase, and greater than 0.2 micrometer phase, or simply just the water body. For this example, let's say that we know that the particulate was filtered, but we don't know to what extent. So we will select the water body with the subphase particulate greater than unknown phase. So in our decision tree, we're going to the right, we're selecting a phase subgroup. Returning to the main branch of the decision tree, the next question is, what's the measurement matrix relationship? And the action tells us to consider the units of our measurements, whether a subgroup was targeted, and this can help us determine the matrix and the measurement matrix relationship. Well, we know that the matrix is the water body targeting particulate above a certain phase. So let's begin by selecting the first filter, the water body with particulates above an unknown phase. This has filtered our results down to 27. And when we go down to the measurement matrix relationship, we see there are only two options per unit volume and per unit mass, while our sample was obtained from the water column. So we can go ahead and select per unit volume. That has narrowed down our search a little bit more from 27 to 25. Let's continue down the decision tree. So were any methods used to obtain the measurement? And the action here is consider all methods used to obtain the measurement Recall the concentration of chlorophyll A was obtained using an in situ chlorophyll fluorometer. Concentration of chlorophyll A is an excellent example of a variable that has many different ways it can be measured. This is a good demonstration of why it is important to capture this information in your P01 code. Including methodologies can help the user better understand how you obtained your measurement. And it can also help people filter based on various methodologies to better compare measurements from different methods. So as I said before, our measurement was obtained using an in situ chlorophyll fluorometer. We can use these keywords in the free search, or if the list is small enough, we can simply read through. Let's use the free search. I will simplify and search for fluorometer. So right away we see we've narrowed our search results down to 12 results, which is more reasonable for us to filter through. So looking through the results, we can see that this one here the concentration of chlorophyll A per unit volume of the water body with the particulate greater than an unknown phase measured by in situ chlorophyll fluorometer suits our measurement. We will click on the concept ID so we can obtain the URI. Quickly double checking the definition, it says the in situ fluorometer with either manufacturer, laboratory, or sample calibration applied. We can go ahead and copy this URI into the measurement type ID field associated with all records pertaining to the concentration of chlorophyll A. 
For the last example, we will find a P01 code for the standard deviation of ammonium concentration obtained using chlorometric autoanalysis. So moving down our decision tree, we have of course already navigated to the C data net facet search. Next, what is the chemical substance being measured? And search for the name of the chemical substance in the free search box. So we will search for ammonium. Let's also go ahead and select it from the chemical substance box so that the filter excludes all measurements not directly related to ammonium. What is the measurement property and is it a statistically derived parameter? In this case, our measurement property is a concentration, but it is the standard deviation of that concentration. So it is a statistically derived parameter. And as a reminder, you can look in the S07 collection for examples of statistically derived parameters. Moving to the next action, we must search for or identify the measurement from the measurement property box. Well, it is concentration and it's right here. So let's click on that. Our search results have now filtered down to 69. Moving down our decision tree, the next question is what is the matrix? And what is the matrix measurement relationship? The action reminds us to consider the units of our measurements, whether or not a subgroup was targeted to help us determine the matrix and the matrix measurement relationship. Our measurement is the standard deviation of ammonium concentration in the water body. So of course the matrix will be in the water body, leading to the measurement matrix relationship being per unit volume. However, when we look at matrices, there are of course a number of subphases that could be applicable. By clicking this drop down arrow, we can see all the potential matrices. So although we're interested in water body, frequently concentration targets a particular phase. So how do we know which one to choose? Since we're not immediately sure, for now, let's apply the measurement matrix relationship filter. So that is per unit volume. We still have 58 results to filter through, which is quite a number to look through manually. For the matrix, let's type in water body so that we are excluding any terms that have matrices for the atmosphere, sediment, or other ones that we are not interested in. Great, now we only have 25 results. Let's see if we can narrow this down a little bit farther by moving down our decision tree. Were any methods used to obtain the measurement? In this case, yes. Chlorometric autoanalysis was used. Let's use that as a key term in the free search box. For simplicity, I will simply search for chlorometric. Now we have 15 search results. And when we look down in the analytical methods section, indeed, there's chlorometric autoanalysis. We can go ahead and apply that. Now we have 13 search results we can read through to determine which P01 code suits our measurement type. We'll notice that the first several results have to do with a specific subphase. However, we are not sure on the exact subphase for our measurement type. In this case, we know there's a subphase, we just don't know what it is. So reading through, we want to look for something that has to do with an unknown phase. This measurement type is the concentration of ammonium per unit volume of the water body, the dissolved plus reactive particulate less than an unknown phase by filtration and chlorometric analysis. Well, there are two elements in this that do not describe our measurement type. First, the method by filtration and the first part with the dissolved plus reactive particulate. So we can exclude this P01 code. The next P01 code is the concentration of ammonium per unit volume of the water body dissolved plus reactive particulate phase by chlorometric autoanalysis. Well, that's close. It has the right methods, concentration, and matrices. However, this subphase is too specific. Looking at the next one, it's the concentration of ammonium per unit volume of the water body unknown phase by chlorometric autoanalysis. This P01 code includes the correct methods, the correct concentration, chemical substance, matrices and relationship, and includes unknown phase, which is relevant to our measurement type. However, this one is missing standard deviation. So if we keep looking, we can see that this one has the concentration standard deviation of ammonium per unit volume of the water body, 
with unknown phase and with the correct methods. So we can go ahead and click the concept ID and obtain the URI. That concludes the examples for chemical measurements. For biological or physical measurements, see their respective videos. At the end of this series, we will cover what to do when you cannot find an appropriate P01 code for your measurement type.